Hello traders, welcome to the live webinar. My name is Chris from Elite Currency. Thank you for joining this 40th webinar already on the, this 20 April 2021. We're going to dive into uh, the ZUSIA and take a look at the, its drawdown that has been taking place for a couple of days, I guess. Uh, yesterday, uh, speeding up a little bit there. And uh, one of the questions from our audience uh, Tomika, who was asking about Ultimate A and uh, well, basically how to approach it uh, with the drawdown. For some, of course, uh, for many that started actually after May 2020, uh, depending on when you started, uh, you are either at break even, maybe a small profit, uh, many still in a drawdown probably. Depends a little bit when you started, of course, in that equity curve. So he had a question on that. So let's dive into both of those uh, questions or topics, I should say. All right. Uh, first of all, the euro dollar. All right, so as some of you might know from a euro dollar and pound dollar video, we've been looking at the bullish reversal at 117, 117.50 uh, back in the end of March, and that did indeed take place as expected. There are a couple of reasons. We were looking at a wave C to the downside. We saw five waves completed. We saw five waves within wave five complete within wave C, a bigger ABC zigzag. We saw support on the daily chart with the long to moving averages. We saw a 38.2 fib uh, on the daily chart, the round levels of 117, divergence pattern on a four hour chart. So there were a lot of factors that went into the potential bounce there. That did indeed happen on an hourly chart. We saw a first sign of that with this five wave up, one, two, three, four, five here, uh, followed by ABC and then a strong momentum up. All of that confirming the ABC pattern, uh, the, the lack of the break of this bottom, the bounces with seven, the five wave up, the break above the 20 minute May, the second break above the 20 minute May, the strong momentum, the flag followed by the strong momentum, the bounce of the 20 minute May, the re-break above the 20 minute May, all confirming that bullish reversal. So a lot of uh, indications plus confirmations that occurred there. And uh, we got a one, two, three here, a one, two, three, four, five. If you're curious about the 21 EMA and the 144 EMA, I have a special Elliott Wave webinar that I did on Monday. It's now on the YouTube channel of Elite Currency. You can check out the recording there, by the way. So five wave up for wave three, then we said ABC, then the wave one, two, strong momentum up three. So we have basically a one, two, three, four, and a five within wave five. We're looking at a one, two, three, four with the ABC and a four and a five. Probably running out of steam now sometime soon. So what happened was that uh, with ZUCA, uh, basically we needed some kind of you know smaller retracement. Uh, with most of the ZUCA accounts uh, or with yeah many of them, maybe probably most, the 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 trades were closed upon this pullback but not with uh with our pam unfortunately the target got missed by a few pips so that's why we got a, a bigger drawdown here because this retracement just missed our target there uh, so some accounts it did hit some accounts it didn't uh and and you know of course if the yeah sometimes the tp can be missed by fractions of a pip and uh and you can yeah, that can happen, right? That's part of trading. So uh, with our account, unfortunately, it missed. It was very close here, but that's the reason because usually speaking, the uh, the trade should close here with this retracement because the ZUCA doesn't need a big retracement to to get into, into profits. Uh, and uh, yeah, unfortunately, it missed that. So what we need now is a, a retracement back down to get into profits in total. And uh, that should occur uh, at this uh, one, just above one, about 120.10 at this moment-ish. Uh, so I think that's pretty likely because we're at with six. Also, if you look at the daily chart and you put a fib from here to here, uh, we are at very close to the 61.8 fib. So price might move up a little bit still to 121, but that's a golden ratio. That's also with seven. So that's where I, at the very least, would expect a bearish bounce back down. As I mentioned in my Euro dollar pound dollar video, uh, that yesterday already, that this 
50 fib probably would not hold because of the strength of the bullish price action that's indeed what happened we got a continuation higher uh so that's that's indeed correct so there is a chance for price to move a little bit higher still to with seven and 61.8 fib that should be a bouncing spot uh, for a move down uh that's the 61.8 fib and how far could it move down well if it if it did complete a five wave up we should see an abc down at the minimum which means that uh, the A should fall at least to the 23.6 fib, if not the 38.2 fib. So as you can see, it should hit easily that 120.10 area, uh, which is above the 23.6 fib. Uh, if not further, it could go further even to the 61.8 fib, more or less like this. A, uh, B, and C, like that, or A, B and C, for instance. So both paths very possible and likely. So I think that uh, here or a little bit higher, we should see the bearish retracement, some small retracement to even things out for uh, the Zussier. And uh, this channel should see retracement back uh, to the bottom of, uh, of the channel. Okay, it's not at the top of the channel and might kind of crawl up or make a dash up but i think that usually speaking the 121 should be a resistance and price should make a move at the least back to the bottom if not further as you can see so but in any case uh let's see that's my expectation now i think that that's a pretty good chance i would say 80 20. um so We'll find out tomorrow. We'll have an update on your dollar pound dollar and see if that's correct. But in any case, it's also one more thing. It's good to note that how the 21 EMA, as I mentioned on Monday's webinar, how important that is, as you can see, break, bounce into 20 EMA, bounce into 20 EMA, bounce into 20 EMA. Uh, really very valuable in understanding. And I think that this is looking like a wave five pattern at this moment. Okay. So with regard to... Uh, the question from Tomika about the Ultima EA. All right. So... Okay, so some started very at the very beginning, uh, over a year now. I think that some even started before this because we actually had an account with a different broker. So we started actually in January, which you don't see because from January to March, we were trading with a different broker. In those months, we had actually tremendous profits, right? But then um, uh, we had a good start in the first couple of months, but then beginning in June, it peaked. We haven't been back since, actually. So for those that started uh, mid-April and not in January, you wouldn't have that first initial earnings. Uh, so in that case, you're slightly negative. As you can see here, it was zero, of course, and now it's plus, yeah, plus four. So it's been a slow year from that perspective. Uh, and... Uh, yeah, only if you traded basic or if you started somewhere beginning of May, beginning of June, somewhere in October, you are, or even in August, uh, anything which is above this 4%, of course, you could even be in negative territory, obviously, as well. For some, you might be even in positive territory if you started in, in February. There are not that many uh, that did that. Uh, sorry, January, but. Uh, you could be even slightly up, right? But there are not many spots where you're up, just a few, maybe here in July, right? Most are about break even, uh, some in, in negative, very few in positive because of the fact that it's about break even, right? So that's quite a substantial time indeed. Uh, and uh, a year is, is plenty of patience, I think. 
So if we break it down, we can see that most of the problems, the main problem was quarter four, 2020. Uh, even quarter three, ultimately, if you add up all those three months, was about minus four. If you look at quarter two, it was plus 36-ish. So really, the quarter four was the problem. Quarter one, 2021, even with less risk, was about 50%, as you can see. April is down so far, but April isn't closed yet. And April is not, you know, is not a full quarter either. So I think that, uh, yeah, the yearly perspective looks flat. But if you break it down, it's really quarter four that's, that made a drawdown. And it can take quite a while to overcome a drawdown. You know, if you, if you lose 50%, you need 100% to be back at break even. So I think that a year is, is, a, is showing patience, but unfortunately, uh, these things can take sometimes longer if you're just trading one or two EAs. Let's take a look at uh, the back testing here. I'm not sure. One second. It's not showing the chart. Hang on. And yeah, we can look at the, it's not showing the number somehow. It's a bit frustrating. Um, let me try this one then. It's probably a, either a problem with my browser or with my FX book because any of these back tests are not showing it. Any case, if you would, unfortunately, I cannot show it to you, but if you would look at the back test, uh, then you would see significant periods where. Uh, prices consolidating and then making a spike, consolidating, retracing, making a spike. These these spikes are typically quick and consolidations take long. It's just like a price chart, in fact. Bull flags take a long in time and quick price actions are quick, right? So the same you would see in the, in the back testing. So uh, to overcome a drawdown, it can take more time sometimes uh, than than what we hope for, really, okay? So second suggestion is that that's one of the reasons why we're working on this portfolio approach, and we hope to launch it soon, I, I'm talking about maybe May even, is because uh, drawdowns, even, you know, 40, 30% drawdowns, let alone 50% drawdowns or more, can take a lot of time to overcome. So uh, what we want to do with the portfolio approach is avoid those drawdowns by splitting the capital among more EAs, therefore lowering the risk to be dependent on one EA, lowering the chance of having a substantial drawdown, and making it more consistent on a quarterly basis. All right. So this EA was very consistent uh, from a monthly and quarterly basis. But you can see even this EA that does uh, is so stable for so long can run into uh, some drawdown problems. And I think the drawdown, I don't know what the drawdown is now exactly, but was running into those levels, like I think, I guess 40 or 50%, uh, if I calculated it correctly. So that's a pretty substantial drawdown, right? So it doesn't happen often to ZUCA. We've been trading it now for, for years and it's, it's quite rare, but as you can see, it, it can happen. So that's every EA is vulnerable to that. Some less than others. It depends on how much risk is traded on those EAs. But uh, yeah, basically, with a portfolio approach, there would be, uh, let's say, five to 10 EAs that are risking 
10 to 20 percent per EA. So if one EA has a drawdown of 50 percent, and you trade only 15 percent of the capital on that, right? Then that is um, that is just seven and a half percent. Let me show you the numbers here. Portfolio approach. Okay. So let's say you have let's we'll probably have uh, more EAs eventually, but let's just use a five EA example to make it simple for the moment. I mean, we ideally have 10 EAs, but I'm not sure if we'll start with 10 EAs at the start, probably not. 20% each, right? So let's say this, this has a minus 50% drawdown, but the others are, has a small drawdown, but the other three, uh, one is at uh, plus five, and the other is at plus 30, and this is, I don't know, plus 40, right? So uh, as you can see, that minus 50% would be very difficult to overcome, or not very difficult. I mean, as I said, with ZUCA, uh, we have those drawdowns, but it's a floating drawdown, so it could actually close quite quickly if we see just a, a small move under your dollar. But uh, a drawdown that is closed can take time. Any drawdown can take time to overcome, right? Because it's quite quite hefty. So that's just part of trading. So, but if it's only 20% on it, that's actually just minus 10% loss there. 20% of 20% loss of 20% is, is minus four. 20% uh, gain of five is plus one. 20% plus three is plus six percent, and this is plus eight percent. So what is the total? So we have minus 14% in losses, but we have plus 15% in gains. So the total portfolio performance is still up at one percent, plus one percent. So of course, if all EAs were to have minus figures, then the whole portfolio is also going to be minus. The, obviously, logical math would dictate that and indicate that, right? So we can't avoid that. If uh, if more EAs are losing than winning, then there's a fair chance that the whole portfolio will be down. It depends a little bit on how much how much the EAs are winning, of course. I mean, in theory, four EAs could be down, but if the fifth one is winning so much, it could compensate all the other fours. You get the math. The math is simple, I guess, right? It's just uh, uh, how much is lost uh, versus how much is gained, obviously. But I think you can see the logic is that if you have five EAs, the chance of, uh, of all those five doing bad is less. And if you have 10 EAs, the chance is even smaller, right? Of course, we, don't want to, we want to only add EAs that are quality and not just add EAs for diversification purposes. That's why they always have to meet certain standards. Each EA will have to meet the standards we have in mind uh, that they are good enough on their own of course, uh, diversification is, is important, but only if the EAs are good enough. So um, we might start with five, but as we expand our EAs that we think are good enough, uh, we hope to reach 10 uh, sooner or later and uh, have around 10% risk. Maybe not each EA will have 10%, maybe some will have 15, the other will five. That depends a little bit on our confidence level in the EAs and the performance, of course, that we see in those EAs. But of course, Diversification in general should help. Uh, the chance is just smaller that all EAs will be performing bad at the same time. And uh, and hopefully this will smooth out the drawdowns and still uh, have a robust growth. We saw in our simulations, for instance, that on average uh, the growth was in the last five years of that simulation, the average growth was about 100%. With the weakest year, I think about plus 65 and the strongest year plus 150. So still a robust growth, but uh, with the with lower drawdowns, we we saw a, that from a quarterly perspective, I think almost all quarters had positive numbers except one with a small uh, minus figure. So uh, this is our plan to help us and traders, because we ourselves have a portfolio of EAs, but uh, it's. It takes some more time. It's more uh, complicated. It's more expensive. 
and we want to make it more available, easier, and cheaper for traders to to join. If they want to, with risk capital, they can afford to lose in a portfolio approach. And the same is valid for stocks, right? Uh, when you have a stock portfolio, I mean, if you trade one stock, well, you're more vulnerable to ups and downs, obviously. But if you have 5, 10, 15, 20 stocks, or if you even trade uh, just the S&P 500, of course, then, or, a, or, or an ETF with a wide basket of stocks, then it's going to be less volatility. So now we're not planning to trade thousands of EAs, but uh, a, a well-balanced uh, set of EAs, I think, should be enough for combining growth and drawdown because we don't want to have that many EAs that it undermines growth at the same time either. We want to find that balance. That's our goal at least. So um, yeah, I guess that's it. I don't, let me check if there are any questions to the form. Uh, ah, we do. Uh, let's see, well, gold, there was a question about gold and a, and a comment here from Sander actually about Ultima EA risk, 5% uh, per risk, which was the default risk. And uh, he understands that some of the subscribers would like to see the risk per setup go back from 3 to 5%. Uh, he, he adds that I respect the current plan of waiting for a drawdown higher low after a decent rally. Uh, let's see. Uh, and, and then set it back to five. But he adds, I personally prefer the 3% setup a bit longer. And I would be more than happy with the potential gains with that risk setting, 3%. So his suggestion number one, leave it at 3% and wait till everyone doubles their account. Then if you can get the deposit out, you can trade with 5%. And, uh, and risk the profits basically suggestion number two from sunder is leave it on three percent and wait for larger gains maybe even 400 percent rather than doubling after that the option to bank profit or and or split the risk between two or three different accounts for example two ea accounts one swat all right so i think uh because last week or, or two weeks ago, I asked the audience here and, and specifically, uh, actually, the ultimate EA portfolio traders, I mean, uh, PAM traders, sorry, uh, profit share traders to, um, yeah, give us their feedback, what they prefer. And we had one answer from Sander, otherwise nothing. And Sander prefers waiting for 3%. And I, uh, I, I, yeah, I fully understand that. I mean, I, I, Certainly, also have a have a maybe a slight preference for that too. To be honest, I think hundred percent is a fair target, and maybe the uh, the current upside was was good, but uh, it, it brought most of us to a smaller loss or maybe break even or small profit at max, but not into a super comfortable spot either. Right? It was good to, to get plus fifty percent in the quarter one right uh much better than than losing 20 percent, right plus 50 is great but it, it didn't put it really into green territory uh at all or or if so very small mostly not uh, because most traders didn't start in december or or or, or february here so um uh, i agree that a higher low that this is a nice impulse up this is a nice impulse up and a higher low could qualify. But on the other hand, it's it's quite early. So I, I agree to for the moment uh use suggestion one from Sonder as the default. Uh, now if others disagree, feel free to reach out again to the form. Uh but Sonder, to be honest, is the only one who suggested that. So um and and I think that suggestion makes sense. So Two two votes now in favor of that. I think it makes sense to wait for uh, a clear profitable push, not only a profitable quarter like quarter one, but actually a push up that brings most accounts into profits, and then um, wait maybe 
uh, for drawdown, slight drawdown, or, or even consider moving it up at that point. We can consider that at that point at least. So let's wait for that. Also, of course, um, yeah, as I said, we have that portfolio approach coming up. And that method might be the preferred one than just trading Ultimate EA itself. So we might uh, uh, we might see how we uh, solve that uh, as well, uh, because I think that that could be better, as I already mentioned before. But for the moment, I think that Sander's idea makes sense. Thank you, Sander, for the suggestion. Uh, Egils, uh, yeah, basically, Zussier, um is waiting for retracement. I mentioned, I don't know if you saw the beginning of the, I started actually discussing the ZCA. So feel free to you know, watch the recording of this live webinar again at the beginning to see what I read, said about that. But very quickly, summary is basically ZCA, uh takes positions with the, with, yeah, with the trend. But if the trend reverses, uh, it tries to look for retracements to close uh, the trades uh, at a positive uh, number. Now, unfortunately, I missed the opportunity to do that here. Many ZCA accounts closed for profits here, but our account missed the target by a very small amount here. And therefore, the drawdown increased as the trade went uh, into the opposite direction because we were looking for a small correction lower. So, but the good, I think personally, I'm still uh, good news in the sense that I think that that small correction to 12010 will happen. Um, 12010, 12050 depends on how far this pushes up, will happen soon because we're getting into high levels. And I think the trend is overextended. And I, I think that the 61.8 fib will hold. So, yeah, small retracement should be enough. Uh, I hope to see it soon. Uh, and I think it's overextended. So it's a little bit unfortunate. Normally speaking, it, nothing, uh, the drawdown should not have, usually speaking, gone into those levels if we just hit the target here. Most accounts did except ours, so we're a little bit unlucky, unfortunately, on that. Um, so yeah, that's the, the short story, I think, that's the summary of what I mentioned at the beginning. Didn't mention, mention much else, actually, I think, but feel free to look at that. Uh, the ZCA is, is about scalping the five minute to your dollar chart where we're looking for um, basically trades in both directions, trying to find oversold, overbought regions for uh, small scalps. Uh, but if the target gets missed, uh, we're looking to, to compensate that by hedging and looking for uh, adding trades. Um, and typically, Basically, a 50 pip retracement is enough to, to place the, uh, the account back into positive territory. But uh, yeah, the trend reversed at a bad moment uh, for the ZCA. I mean, I personally, with my wave analysis, was bullish, but the ZCA was bearish, basically. And uh, the retracements have been quite shallow. So uh, yeah, we're waiting for a small push down, except this one. And uh, yeah, somehow, just as I said, unfortunately missed TP by by a fraction. Uh, we're talking about probably a pip, uh, I think, if I remember correctly. And uh, yeah, that uh, that's the reason why. So a little bit unlucky uh, that we got uh, this strong uptrend, whereas the downtrend was so strong. This close and reverse is bringing it into some uh, some problems and unluck in the sense that we missed the target by a pip or two, I think. One, I think one pip, but max a few pips. So this close and reverse is something I expected, but the ZCA team was, uh, yeah, the ZCA itself was bearish because of the downtrend. And we're waiting for a small retracement to retrace this, this strong push up basically. All right, folks, thanks so much for joining. 
that's it for today. Um, we'll be back tomorrow with the Euro Dollar Pound Dollar video, and of course next week with uh, more live webinars and videos. And uh, we all have more analysis, of course, coming up today and tomorrow and the rest of the week. And see you all very soon. Cheers.